Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you can watch me suffer throughout my OSCP journey. So as the video suggests, this is my first entry to my journey to OSCP vlog series, if you will. So I wanted to do this video series partially to keep up my YouTube activity, but also to share the journey with people who are also considering doing this. I wanna keep the videos quite short because I think it's more important that you're actually doing the work and practicing as opposed to watching vloggers like me talk about it. But it should give you some ideas of how the progress has been, what I've struggled with, and what you might be able to prepare yourself for before you start taking the course. So to get started, I wanna go into my prerequisite knowledge. So I've worked in IT for the better part of 10 years now, uh, but I've been on computers since I was a kid. Uh, my first programming language was QBasic, and that was basically just to try and run some games. I got into web development at a very early age because I loved making websites for uh, Counter-Strike clans. Ended up doing more time doing uh, web dev than I did actually playing. And then I moved into a more proper programming when I got into university, so doing object-oriented programming in C Sharp. My professional career has been a bit of a jack of all trades. I started as an intern doing uh, Cold Fusion development and then got into C Sharp development. And then from there, I joined a Big Four Consulting and started working as a technical architect. So I was designing the technical backend of very large scale systems, a monumental role to take on as a grad. After wanting to get out of the 60 hour a week work life, I started contracting as a performance tester which was really fun and it gave me a great understanding of both TCP and HTTP. And then I started my offensive security career in which I've been in for I think the past three years now. I started out doing web application pen testing but then soon moved into a configuration review, a cloud review, um, and lots of other kind of professional services within the security industry that aren't so hands-on technical. And despite wanting to go into the more security compliance and management types of roles, I still wanted to do my OSCP as kind of like a personal achievement to myself. So in terms of professional qualifications, I've got my ECPPT V2 or the Pentest Professional Certificate from eLearn Security. And I've also got the EWPTX, which is the Web Application Pentest Extreme Certificate, also from eLearn Security. I'm hacker rank on Hack the Box. So I bought the three month lab access pass because I like to be thorough and I think I will actually be submitting the lab report because that will just force me to really read and understand the content and also practice by doing the labs and taking detailed notes. I think personally for me, that's the best way to do it because I really like to learn by really writing things down and retaining knowledge that way. My prereq knowledge should put me in a good position to be able to do this. I mean, in my ECPPT V2, uh, there was a lot of, you know, enumeration, privilege, escalation, pivoting, and all of that type of content. So I feel like I'm in a pretty good place to start as well as doing lots of hack the box and I'm starting to, you know, be pretty, quick with that. I am feeling a bit nervous, but I also know at the same time, when you really push yourself, that's where most of the growth happens. So be sure to subscribe and watch me continue to suffer throughout this OSCP journey vlog series. I'll be keeping these videos really short and maybe uploading one a week or maybe one every fortnight. I'm yet to work it out. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.